Hey, hey, welcome to this little House of Strombo moment and thank you for checking it out. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do now. Talk a little bit about Canada Day and Canada 150. Depending on the time of year you're watching it, well, this is a big part of the conversation. This wasn't always an overly patriotic nation. Canada used to lose its mind when it came to hockey and beer commercials, but that is certainly changing. And with what's going on in politics around the world, Canadians identify more as Canadians. But the Canada 150 conversation is particularly complicated, and that is because of Canada, well, a colonizing relationship with Indigenous peoples and the Indigenous cultures that were already here. So we don't want to be all rah-rah Canada because the country's got some issues that it needs to deal with, and we want to do it as grown-ups. We can't be babies about this. We can't be smug about this. We just want to hear other people's points of view. So what we did today was invite a bunch of artists to this house in different fields, some you may recognize, some you may be introduced to for the very first time, not to talk just about Canada 150. So here's what we want to do. Treat it like one of those job reviews that you dread so much at the big company you may work for. What would you like us to stop doing? What would you like Canada to start doing? And what would you like Canada to continue doing? So while everybody's talking about Canada 150, here at the House of Strombo, we think it's more about a better 150. Hi hey everyone, my name is Harrison. I'm uh, a producer from Toronto, Ontario. And yeah, uh, let's talk a little bit about Canada. So what do you want Canada to stop doing? I want Canada to stop being like, um, I'm so glad I live in Canada right now. I've heard enough of it. I, I get it. Okay, yes, we're not the U.S., but of course we, we also have, we have our problems. Everyone has their problems, right? Hi there, I'm Tork Campbell. I play in a band called Stars. Write stuff, hang out. So right down the barrel. Yeah. All right. What would you like Canada to stop doing? I would like Canada to stop talking one way about peace and acting another way. I've had enough of that hypocrisy, and I don't care whether it's Stephen Harper or Thomas Mulcair or Justin Trudeau, I think it's beyond politics. If we want to be proud of being Canadian, then we have to be a peaceful place and we can't be hypocritical when it comes to peace. We have to put our money where our mouth is and invest in peace, not war. That's what I'd like to see Canada stop doing, is stop, stop talking out two sides of your mouth. My name is Craig Mannix, um, also known as Big C, currently a and uh, manager for Sony Music Canada, uh, better than, uh, otherwise known as the urban vet in the Canadian urban scene. <laughs> <laughs> what would you? Yeah, that's me. That's you. That's, yeah, that's good, me. And so much more. Yeah. What would you like Canada to stop doing? <sighs> I'd like Canada to stop breaking down. I, I I can only. I'm talking from a music artistic perspective i'd like canada to stop breaking down their stars and maybe start building them up some more my name is leah i'm a bassoonist and i have a background in audio engineering what do you want canada to stop doing um i feel like trans rights specifically um everyone thinks everything's fine right but i've still had to like i've gone through several doctors who didn't know what to do with me like i've i've um it's still um it's not friendly to us. I'm Virginia Markson, and I was a flute player in uh, three different orchestras for 39 years, the National Ballet, the Opera, and then the Toronto Symphony. I retired and became a full-time psychotherapist and a gardener. <laughs> what would you like Canada to stop doing? I think that I want to Canada to stop worrying as much and enjoy what we have. We really have an opportunity to look south and see what's going on there, and we have so much than that. And so, stop worrying. Enjoy. My name is Isque, and I am an artist, singer, songwriter, instrumentalist, you know, all of those things. What would you like us to start doing? Um, I think it would be great if we could Recognize that in these relationships that are being developed, that um, we can say that yes, the past is the past and history is history and that these things have happened in terms of you know, what's happened between indigenous people and you know, government and the crown and, and whatnot. Um, and while we're not responsible for our ancestors' actions, I think it would be great if people 
in general could say like, hey, these things that have happened, they're, they're tricky and they're tough and they're hurtful and they're powerful and they're all of these things. They come with a lot of weight. And even though I might not have done that personally myself, I'm going to be a part of the change and I'm going to be a part of the process to make sure that these relationships build and develop and grow in a healthy way because it takes generations to undo the trauma of the generations that have passed. We didn't learn, we didn't learn ass about indigenous history in school, man. And it would be really, I, I think it's, we should, we should really start pushing that a little more. Uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta know our roots, we gotta know what land we're on. So it's definitely not ours. Hi, my name is Lido Pimienta. I am a mother, I am a musician, I am an artist, and I am a Twitter terrorist. What do you want Canada to continue to do? So th there's definitely a lot of things that we need to start doing, a lot of things we need to stop doing, but what is, what is Canada doing right? What I do love is that Indigenous and black women are taking control. <laughs> and Canada, willingly or forcefully, is listening. Um, late, <laughs> but uh, uh, late is better than never. What would you like Canada to continue doing? Being awesome. Um... <laughs> I think one of the things that Canada does that I appreciate is I do feel like, as a whole, we are open to differences and we are open to change and we are open to moving forward. We're doing a great job at having a beautiful multicultural land. Keep funding the CBC, keep funding the Canada Council, keep funding Factor, keep giving money to art. Look at what Canada's artistic power is in the world. Look at all the amazing artists from pop to rock to classical. Look at all the great films and novels we produce. That's bringing money into this country. It's bringing prestige to this country. It's bringing people to come and see where we make these things. And I think Canada should continue to see art as a public service and as a public necessity and not go the way of the United States and start saying it should compete in the open market because the soul can't compete with the devil. All right, the quintessential Canadian record. What we're telling everybody, though, is you can't pick a Drake record, a hip record, or a Rush record, depending on how you, how you identify. What's your quintessential Canadian record? Emotion, by like Carly Rae Jepsen. Warm Blood is a huge track. There's just a bunch of huge tracks on the Carly Rae Jepsen album. And I think that is a criminally slept on album and it deserves more support. Emotion by Carly Rae Jepsen. I know it's new, but you know. What are you gonna, I'm gonna say Drake? <laughs> Quintessential Canadian record that isn't done by the hip or Rush or Drake. <laughs> How did you know I was gonna pick all of those? Because <laughs> um, everybody does. Yeah. I think for me, I would actually, in honor of Canada 150 and celebrating 150 years of colonialism, I'm gonna go with the Red River Jig, which is, I'm from Treaty One, and that is the traditional land, tri pardon me, the traditional territory of the Métis people. And the Red River Jig, to me, really embodies this relationship and this development of um, a culture and a language and a group of people that came together in, uh, how to say, as Canada became a country. So this relationship between different cultures created a new culture, and from that stemmed this really fantastic song. And if you haven't heard the Red River Jig, you should Google it right now, because it's the best. A quintessential Canadian album. Can I have more than one? Well, you can, yeah, I mean, whichever you're into. Okay, okay. The quintessential is actually, for me, We Are the Hallucination by A Tribe Called Red. <laughs> To me, if someone, if an alien would come from Mars or Uranus or whatever, and you wanted to show them an album made in, in Canada, um, you should give them We Are the Hallucination and they will get a broad idea of, you know, it would be an introduction to, to the truth. A definitive Canadian album that wasn't done by Rush the Hip or Drake. This is the hardest question. I s this is the hardest question because everybody, see, like we were talking about this, Canada's a wide country and it's very, very different in its experiences. In Vancouver, I would say the ultimate Canadian album is Kaput. In Toronto, I would say the ultimate Canadian album is Feel Good Lost. In Winnipeg, you know, it's gotta be a Weaker Than's album. Out East, you know, it's like it, it's- But you gotta take a stand, Tor, you gotta take a stand. Harvest. There you go. 
recorded in Los Angeles, and that's quintessentially Canadian. <laughs> that's a perfect answer. I love this man. That's a perfect answer. <laughs> that's a perfect answer. <laughs>